Welcome to the Butterfly Effect. I'm Chris Horner. This is stage five of the 2023 Giro d'Italia. Now, today's race is 170 kilometers, just there over, about 105, 108 miles in distance. Doesn't look like a very difficult one, right? A couple small categorized climbs at the beginning of today's race, but they'll finish out with about 50 kilometers to go on today's stage five, and then it's flat all the way into the finish. So when you look at the profile, you think, wow, this is just a sprinter stage, right? Well, let me remind you guys of some days that I spent back in the 90s with FDJ and my first experience of these roads in Italy while doing Trino Adriatico, there was a massive crash on a rainy stage just like we're witnessing here today where 50 guys went down and then we neutralized the stage, went all the way into the finish neutralized for the last 20, 30 kilometers of that year's race in the 90s. And then most of us went on to go to the hospital. I had to get stitches in my right elbow here. And so the experiences uh, that I've had on these Trino Adriatico roads going from coast to coast here in the center of Italy, they're always messy. They're always slippery. It's always dangerous when the rain comes out. And when you look at the neutral start and you see the rain coming off the car tires splashing back there, you know it's rain all over the place. Now, when they hit kilometer zero, they're going to have to wait just a little bit longer before the race official finally starts it. Then he's going to throw the flag and we're going to see two green edge projects, one Coratec rider, three riders in total go up the road. And then Thibaut Pino from FDJ is going to jump across to put four riders in this front group. It's not going to take much longer before one more rider, Champion, wants to jump across from Kofius. Now up front, we see the four riders. They're going down the descent. They're not taking massive risk up here. But then all of a sudden, we see the core tech rider, Stefano Gondine. He loses the front wheel. And then Marcel Lucy back there. He grabs too much brake. He's on the white paint. He goes down too. We see Thibaut Pino, feet come out of the pedals. He just straightens up the bike, holds it right. You know he's getting on front and back brakes smooth and as easy as the French man can. And he just barely keeps the bike upright with some intelligent bike handling skills here. And we're just a few kilometers into today's race. So you know it's going to be crazy. Now the two riders in front that crash, one will go back, Marcel Lucy, the Green Edge Project rider. He's going to go back to the peloton. Thomas Champion from behind, Kofidis, he's going to catch on just after. After this crash and then we're going to see that the first one to go down Stefan Gondine he's going to bridge his way back up to this group of three to put four riders in the first breakaway here on stage five of the Giro once they get up to the KOM this is all that we want to see from Thibaut Pino because we want to see him save some strength and the Frenchman's thinking the same thing right I grab some maximum KOM points to look good for my blue race leaders KOM jersey here and then I'm dropping back to the peloton as he's dropping back, we got about 152 kilometers to go. Then all of a sudden, we see this crazy little dog. You know, look at look as the riders coming up to the little dog there. He's walking out of the road, right? He's almost all the way back on the sidewalk. Then he's going to get aggressive. He's going to tell this peloton of European riders what he thinks about them coming on to his territory as he runs right back out in the road, almost taking out the Yumbo Visma rider. And then it's Davide Ballerini's pseudo quick step that goes down hard on the left side, slides all the way across, his, across the road as his bike slides all the way across the other. And then there's more crashes. It's the race GC favorite leader here, Remco Abnepal, that goes down in the crash when we see him all the way into the gravel road on the right side of the road. Davide Ballerini will walk over. Peter Siri will park his bike and go over there to try to help the current road world champion who's crashed here and the big time favorite to win the Giro. But Remco Abnepal is just sitting down as everyone's having a powwow over the top of them. Now, finally, we'll see Remco Abnepal get up. The mechanic had switched his rainbow jersey for a fresh rainbow jersey bike and then taken his destroyed bike up to the secondary car, grabbed his spare bike out of the secondary car and put it on the first car because you want that you want the bike behind the peloton that's following Remco Abnepal to be fresh and new. So now Remco's on a new bike. He's got teammates all wrapped around him and he's heading back up to the peloton. We'll see the Albacine de Kunic rider as they're coming up to the back of the peloton. Albacine de Kunic rider decides he's going to drop his bottle and leave it as a gift for a mother that has way too many kids around her. When he does, he drops the bottle. The bottle starts to roll back out, and we see the kid dive out in the street right in front of Remco Abnepal. Luckily, it wasn't real close, but can you imagine if that bottle just had a little bit more speed rolling down the hill? The mom stuck there holding one kid and got two or three kids running around going crazy out in the road, so you can't really blame her, right? Maybe she's got 
got to have to get some help from some family members, though, before you watch the next Giro d'Italia pass by because Remco Evnerpool has his next close scare there it's just as he's coming by the kid reaching for the bottle. Now they'll bridge up to the back of the peloton. Everything's status quo up there. The breakaway's up front. You got three riders up there because, of course, Thibaut Pinot dropped back. And once he drops back, you're going to see him with, next to his teammate there, Stefan Kuhn. You know he's probably talking to Stefan Kuhn. Man, you can't believe it. There was a crash within two kilometers. I'm in the break, and already guys are falling down in front of me all over the place. Took every skill I had to keep the bike upright. Stefan Kuhn's going like, that's nothing, man. We had a dog run out in front of us. And and it crashed the current road world champion and the big favorite, Remco Evnipol. So as they're exchanging war stories up there, the three riders in the break are trying to gain some time on the peloton, but they're not getting anywhere at all throughout this stage. In fact, when I show you the time splits at 50 kilometers to go, they've only gained about a minute and a half. And you look throughout this whole stage at 170 kilometers long, the maximum lead I'd seen these guys get were three minutes before all of a sudden Trek, Segafredo, DSM, Albacine, De Kunic, and Movistar were even thrown in the mix back there to hold these guys at a safe distance. So you know the speeds aren't fast, but they're going to get chaotic pretty soon. Now we get into about 25 kilometers to go. There's a sprint line competition coming up. And then just after that, they go through the roundabout and the motorcycle camera behind all of a sudden looks like he probably tried to jump the roundabout, must have lost the front wheel on the motorcycle camera, purely guessing here. But all of a sudden the screen goes black. So guys are slipping everywhere, not just the cyclists, even the motorcycle cameras. We go back to the Peloton. We still see it's Trek Segafredo on the front, DSM, Albacine de Kunic, and Movistar chasing full gas. Yes. Now with 20 kilometers to go, Thomas Champion and Stefan Gondin, they'll drop out of the break and go back to the peloton because Zaccarado's thrown in an attack and he's going solo. The peloton behind starts getting interested with about 10 kilometers to go. They're going curb to curb. Of course, we're seeing Team Enos. We're seeing Pseudo Quick Step. Yumbo Visma's close to the front there too as all the GC teams are trying to get to the front to keep it safe until three kilometers to go. It'll start getting real interesting though with about just over seven kilometers to go. As we see coming up the left side, Albacine de Kunix come flying up the left side of the barricades because we know just in front of that's going to be a left turn with Albacine de Kunic lined up with six guys, maybe seven guys there with Caden Groves, their last guy, their big time favorite to win here stage five Giro. They fly into this left turn. Then in between the left, there's all of a sudden a right turn coming up. We go into the right and it's Albacine de Kunic, about 15th position. Looks like he just overlapped wheels or lost the front end. He goes down and crashes hard. Then all of a sudden we see some damage happening back here because Caden Groves is going down and we see race favorite here, Primos Roglic from Yumbo Visma going down. Other sprinters that go down, Gaviria's down, and race leader's pink jersey is stuck in the carnage back here. As we see Caden Groves throwing his leg over the bike at the same time that Primos Roglic, who's done a sideways kind of jump over to the side to avoid the pile. He's throwing his leg over his bike the same time Caden Groves is. Caden Groves steps on the pedals and takes off. But there's something wrong with Primoz Roglic. Something's happening. His pedals are slipping. His bike's not working right. But now the cameras have moved further back to see the damage back there with Gaviria from Movistar. Movistar rider, he's trying to get his chain back on and not having any kind of luck. If you look, the chain is all the way off the outside of the chain ring as we see the Colombian rider trying to get it back on. But this will end any shot here for Gaviria to be able to win today's stage five of the Giro. Now, what's happening to Primoz Roglic? Well, all of a sudden, we look over the side of the road. We see it's Primoz Roglic bike there, right? It's marked there with the number one on the number plate. And that's Kuhn Bauman who's taking a nature break as Primoz Roglic's bike is taking a break too because Primoz Roglic has switched bikes with his teammate. Now we got a full chase going on in the second group. We go up to the front to see who missed that crash going into that right-hand turn. Well, quick steps, Remco Abnapul's on the front of this group. They're only about 50 strong up here. Quick steps on the front. Doesn't look like they're really throwing down a full effort here on the front. They're just trying to keep the Belgium rider in good condition and out of trouble. As we look further behind, what's happening? Well, Primoz Roglic has got Jumbo Visma on the front. And the pink jersey, Luknesen is there. Remember when I told you guys yesterday, maybe they should have given Luknesen a little bit more time just for these reasons right here. Because 30 seconds lead against Remco Evnerpol is not that much of an advantage. And now could put Remco Evnerpol 
having to pull back into the pink jersey at the end of today's stage because of that mistake of not giving him enough time on yesterday's stage four. Well, Primoz Roglic, you see his team on the front. They're trying to close this gap, and now all of a sudden they've blown guys off their wheel as we see four riders bridging up to that front group of about 50 being led by Sudol Quickstep. Just as Primoz Roglic and Jumbo Visma are bridging up to this front group, we see two Albacine de Kunic riders that are coming back. Well, Jumbo Visma have to split, one going to the left, one going between them, and Albacine de Kunic riders jumping out of that front group are coming back because Caden Groves, their sprinter, still back there as guys were blowing and couldn't hold the speed from the Jumbo Visma train up front that have now closed this gap with about 3.2 kilometers to go. Just after they close the gap, we'll see the second part of the peloton close up too because of the Albacine de Kunic riders who finished closing the gap that the Yumbo Visma guys already did. Now we go under the 3K banner. Everything's safe now in terms of the general classification if anyone crashes at this moment. But there's still a stage victory up for grabs with three kilometers to go. And when we look behind, all of a sudden we see it's Rimko Evnapul at 2.5. He's decided he doesn't want to be any closer to the front, so he's going to drift back. When he does, look at the Belgian right. He looks left over his shoulder. When he looks left, what does he do? He does like most guys do, right? They look left. He drifts to the right. Once he drifts to the right, he almost overlaps with the first Trek Sager Freighter rider. Then he bounces off who I can only believe has got to be Mads Pedersen. After Mads Pedersen hits him and holds the bike up right for Trek Sager Fredo, Pseudo quick step rider Remco Ebnapol crashes hard, causes a chain reaction, and there's guys going down all over the place. When you look over there at Remco Ebnapol as he slides over to the right side of the road, who comes in right behind and hits the group hard? Davi De Ballerini. He is the first rider to go down with that dog incident at about 150 kilometers to go in today's race. And let me remind you guys, yesterday he had a hard stage. He was suffering throughout yesterday stage four. So today's stage five could have been a nice easy ride up here for the pseudo quick step rider, but instead he's flying into the end of the pile of bodies and bikes there as we see the quick step rider going down to make two riders down on that side then we look over to the left that carnage that Remco Evnipul caused when he drifted to the right side while he was looking left well that chain reaction to the center there caused all kinds of guys to go down in there and then if we see there's Bora Hans grow riders down in this massive crash with Remco Evnipul and the road is plugged up up front, what's happening? Albacine de Kunic's coming, flying up the left side of the road. There's Albacine de Kunic with three riders. There's three riders from DSM. We see Johnny Milan, who's back there with Pasqualon, his teammate from Bahrain Victorious. They're getting a little swarmed a little bit. Pasqualon, who's done an amazing job of keeping Johnny Milan in great position. They're getting swarmed and getting lost as Albacine de Kunic, DSM, and Jaco Alula now are taking the front. We see that... Pasqualon's going to have to do a big hit back there somewhere. Now we look a little bit further back in the peloton. Well, Mark Cavendish is in there. Mark Cavendish from Team Astana's got a shot here at winning stage five. Now we start going under just 1.5 kilometers to go, and things start getting interesting as Albacine de Kunic is starting to lose the front to Jaco Alula. Jaco Alula's flying up the center part of the road here with a lot of speed. They got three riders at least left in this group pulling on the front, trying to bring it in for Michael Matthews. 1.1 kilometers to go. You got one Jaco Alula, one Albacine de Kunic. You got one DSM riders and Caden Grove sitting fourth. Problem for Caden Grove? Well, he's got two DSM riders on his wheel. Mayhoff and he's got Alberto Denezi, the sprinter for DSM. Now there's gotta be some problems right here when you do the math for Caden Groves because he knows there's not a whole lot of guys in front of him and only one's his teammate. Now we start going just under about one kilometer to go. His teammate pulls out of the second position because he's done a ton of work here on stage five already and especially a ton of work since that crash was seven kilometers to go. That'll scoot everybody up and we look at Caden Groves. Now he's sitting third position, and it's Jaco Alula on the front, and that rider's got to be getting tired. 900 meters to go. The Jaco Alula rider, he pulls off hard to the left. That leaves DSM on the front, and Caden Groves has got a dilemma right here with under 900 meters to go because he's sitting second wheel, and there's no way the DSM rider's going to be able to pull all the way into the finish. We get to the 700-meter left bend, and now all of a sudden the DSM rider's pulled off the front. Caden Groves is left first wheel. Now we see from behind DSM though, Mayhoff. Mayhoff are all of a sudden he pulls up to the front, takes over the front position. Caden Groves, as we come into about six and into about 550 meters to go, when you see him coming around the bend, 
We see it's DSM front. We see it's Caden Grove second. Alberto Denese third. Johnny Milan, who's teammate Pasqualon has done a fantastic job of putting him in the right position. Now Johnny Milan's got a shot at winning here at stage five because we're coming into 500 meters to go and Mads Pedersen is still there on the wheel too. Right there next to Johnny Milan for a chance here to win stage five. Just behind him in about eighth position, Mark Cavendish. Astana is still here at the front of the group trying to win stage five as they come out of this Ben, with about 400 meters to go, you see it's DSM still on the front. Then 250 meters to go. This is when Caden Groves really starts to get into a sprint at about 225. He's kicking 100% hard. Then 200 meters. What's happening? Mark Cavendish has found his way to the left and is diving and splitting through the hole there to come up to about four-fifth position right behind Mads Pedersen. And he is coming with a ton of speed. 150 meters to go. Mark Cavendish kicks 100 percent hard looks like he's got a shot here at winning stage five then the back wheel slips the British rider his bike starts going sideways off as he's pitching the bike trying to hold it up when he does it moves him all the way over to the left outside of the group 100 meters to go Cavendish has saved it Caden Groves is still on the front going full gas Johnny Milan who's already a stage winner here Giro Detail sitting second wheel he's still got a shot and Mads Pedersen sitting third now all of a sudden we're just under 100 meters to go Mark Cavendish what are you thinking the British rider looks right over his shoulder. He's thinking about going back in and continue a sprint. There's no way you can save it at this point in time, Mark Cavendish. But he pulls back right and goes all the way back into the main sprint line here for guys trying to win stage five with not a whole lot of speed. Alberto Denese comes flying up, clips the front wheel of Mark Cavendish as he goes off to the left side. We'll see that it's Alberto Denese that holds his bike up, but Mark Cavendish loses his right foot out of the pedals he's moving hard right slams Filippo Forelli from Green Edge Project straight into the barricade Green Edge Project rider somehow is holding it up Mark Cavendish comes back to the left all of a sudden his left foot's flying out he's doing a Superman up front what's happening Caden Groves is still leading here at stage five with 50 40 30 meters to go Superman back there Mark Cavendish loses the bike it's coming out from underneath him Caden Groves is winning today's stage five today's chaotic epically crazy stage here in the rain at Italy Caden Groves takes the stage win we see Johnny Milan who just couldn't quite come by but he gets second Mads Pedersen rounds out the podium over on the left side of the road it's Alberto Denese in the center of the road sliding across for fifth it's Mark Cavendish and his bike he's got his bike front wheel up there and that'll get him fifth on the stage for Mark Cavendish but this was a crazy stage throughout the whole day here at the Giro d'Italia. And Mark Cavendish sliding across the line was just part of it. We go back and we look at Remco Evnepoel as he finally got up and on his bike. He's walking back over to the director complaining like crazy. Just losing it looks like at his director. But Remco Evnepoel. This was your crash. You caused this. You looked left as you were dropping back out of the front group, and then you faded to the right, almost crashed the two Trek Sega Fredo riders, and somehow, I believe it was Mads Pedersen, just barely held up his bike. So when you look at this sef second crash here from Remco Evnipol, this was his fault. You go up to this final crash from Mark Cavendish with one, less than 100 meters to go. What were you thinking, Mark Cavendish, to lose speed after losing the back wheel and then sliding back into the line that's going the fastest speed you can possibly have in a bike race to the last line here to win stage five and hope that you're not going to cause a crash. There was no, no chance whatsoever for Mark Cavendish at 100 meters ago once his back tire slipped and he was all the way to the left side. Man, just ride it out. Finish the last 100 meters. Finish top five, six, seventh, whatever it is. But you got the Tour de France coming up July 1st, and you need to break Eddie Merckx's record. This is not the way you do it. Mark Cavendish is the best sprinter the world of cycling has ever seen. But sometimes he makes some crazy decisions. And that decision at 100 meters ago, once he lost his back tire on that white painted line there, that decision to move back into the fast line and put yourself in danger and all the other riders in danger, I almost wonder if he should be DQ'd for a decision like that here on stage five. 
Either way, it was a rememberable stage. All the general classification guys like Remco Evnipol got the same time, but one guy in the top 10, Jay Vine, lost about a minute and 10 seconds, minute and 15 seconds, as he must have got caught up in one of the crashes back there with seven kilometers to go and gave up some time for UAE Team Emirates crazy stage make sure you go and look at the final results there's no way i can cover everything but luke Nissen and the race leader's pink jersey who also got split off he did make it back on with the yumbo visma guys they're pulling and with the help of albacine de kunik that came back and got Caden groves who won today's stage also secured the pink jersey for luke Nissen to hold it for at least one more stage here at the giro d'italia make sure you guys like and subscribe this was a crazy day of racing. Remco Evnipol down twice. Certainly, he's got some sore elbows and some sore hips after today's stage. Luckily, because of the rain, my experience, as long as you don't hit something while you're sliding, when you crash in the rain, the slide is really what keeps the bones from breaking in your body. So if you can slide a long time, it'll save your bones, but it's going to cost you a whole lot of skin on the road rash side, whichever whichever side you are sliding on. And probably Remco Ebner pulled most, most likely slid on both because there was a lot of sliding going on throughout today's race. And Davide De Ballerini, his Italian teammate, went down with both of those crashes at the same time Remco Ebner pulled did. Strange thing when you see two riders from the same team go down in the same crashes in two different times at the end, at the beginning and the end of a stage like today's. Crazy stage. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. Tomorrow's stage, most likely going to be a sprinter stage. Stage kind of a little bit like today. A little bit harder climbing the stage, but flat run into the finish. So if it's raining, you know it's going to be crazy and dangerous. And hopefully, when we're talking about the favorites, Remco Evnipol, he'll heal up from the crash and nothing serious is broken. So we can have that big battle in the mountains that's coming in week two of the Gerald Attack. Like and subscribe. I'll see you guys on the next edition, stage six of the Gerald real soon.